people Let's know just Mars. Start this. Everything if Morbius you do. joins I, more. Morbius joins. If not, whatever. I got the same goals as y'all. Just, I, I mean, I could. All right. So, yeah, man. All right. So let me just change the Facebook setting real quick. We're back with uh, the marvelous. Originally, kid. I was planning on hopefully Morbius can still join us, but Nico uh, was watching, and I was said, "Hell, why not? Why not invite Nico? Make this a, uh, you know, uh, just an even more fun killer interview." Right. I can't see myself on Facebook right now. Hold on. Just give me one sec, guys. Where the hell am I? Oh, what the hell? Dude, heck? I, be, I would love to learn healing. Like, I think that's... Oh, the Nico's ultimate. the man for that, bro. Yeah, big time I am. Hold on. Did, did you see that uh, the monitor video I came out with, Ken? Yeah, dude, you're dope. Bro. I haven't seen the whole thing, but I did see to get the notification, man. Oh yeah, on your on your uh, uh, YouTube channel, definitely. So are you are you living in, dude? I don't I don't know how to change this, bro. Like where where? What, what's going on, Ken? What are you having trouble with? So okay. Oh wait wait wait, Morbius is on too. Oh hell yeah, this is even doper. We got Morbius in the house too. Yes, this is killer, killer, super killer. We got freaking four telekinetics in the house. Oh, this is gonna be epic. I gotta fix my setting, but I can't freaking see myself. Man, so many tech issues today. It's annoying. It's okay. We'll enjoy the process, but it'll work. Hey, you? Do you know Nico? Do you know Morbius or? Um, I uh, I actually used to uh, babysit him when he was younger. I don't know if he remembers us. <laughs> <laughs> Not my first time meeting him. Oh, okay, but, but you know of him. Hey. <laughs> He's from the That's funny. <laughs> that was funny. Like What's that. up, brother? How you doing? Good. He's doing the work. We're finally. I was just on a Jeff Mero's podcast yes, earlier, and then I uh, got comfortable, and then hop back on with you. Shit! What's that? Sam, right. are you? Damn, I, it's a I'm bird. <laughs> All right, can you guys hear me? All right, so what? Yeah, a lot yeah. of tech, a lot of tech issues today, but uh, we're here with like freaking four Here, phenoms. Those, uh, four uh, phenoms. I can't hear the headphones. Can you give me the headphones? Okay, can you hear me, Morbius? They're in the back. Yeah, I can hear you, but I got to get my headphones so I can get a better uh. Okay. Signal here. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay. Right. Dope. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, um, so that those of you that don't know, I mean, I've interviewed you know Chris and uh, Nor Norman last few times. Or probably everybody watching knows who they are. Um, to those that don't know, this is Nico Morales. He's a healer, telekinetic, just freaking energy badass all around. I'm a big fan of this guy. Um, yeah, are you are you in Colorado right now, Nico? Yeah, currently in Colorado right now. Okay, okay, dope, dope. You know, okay. I'm moving around for three months around the States. Yeah, yeah, not nice, nice. <laughs> awesome. Well, you got to hook up with my boy Dallas, dude. Well, oh, we'd love to. Where's he located? Not Dallas? Col Colorado. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I got to link you up with him. But, all right. So, um, yeah, you know, just uh, this is just such a amazing, beautiful scenery. I envision stuff like this. I swear to God, like just talking to like multiple telekinetics Same, right? like this. This is so dope, so amazing. We'll be, um, we'll be in one room together one day. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. up, we all meet up. <laughs> we all, yeah, we for sure gonna meet up. So yeah. obviously, one thing we all have in common is tel telekinesis. Um, you know, we to do this stuff and like you know, this is. 
one of our passions. I know Nico is very versed. He does like all sorts of stuff, but um, healings and all that kind of stuff. Actually, um, yo, I maybe this is like, maybe this isn't coincidence. Maybe like the universe let us all here. Like, yo, Nico, Norman's sick. Norman, has Norman an yes. like may, maybe I need to, maybe this was all meant to be. Like I think you guys, you two need to link up. Man. Definitely, I uh, believe I have his YouTube. Yeah, he looks a little frozen right now. Oh, there he goes. He's yeah, moving. No, yeah, Norman might yeah, be frozen. <laughs> <laughs> He's just moving in short bursts. Really but yeah, definitely, I want to link you two up and stuff like that, and that'd be really cool. So, all right. So, um, I want to ask everybody, um, you know, something in regards to telekinesis. Like Chris, I think is the type that likes to do telekinesis, like right in front of the object. Like you know, he's more of a magnetism guy. Um, I haven't really seen Chris do a whole lot of telekinesis from like a distance and stuff like that. Morbius is probably the type. Morbius likes to move like cups from like further away. Norman's pretty burst of versatile. He can do like you know up close distance. I think I'm like you know. I, I think I have more success up close use a magnetism chi, if you will um is that a pretty good assessment chris you would say like i haven't seen you do a whole lot of telekinesis from like a distance like you like to you know levitate your your foil and stuff like that you know using your magnetism like a lot yeah um i've been i guess geared more towards the um electrical current side of things so increasing my amperage and voltage and uh, you know, but as far as the distance goes, I've shared videos of distance on um, our private chat that we have going. Uh, but, yeah, I guess it's just, you know, what I'm into right now. Mm, okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what about, can you, can you talk right now, Norman, or are you frozen? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, can, can, how about you, Maurice? Can you, can you hear me right now pretty good, or? Yeah, I can hear you fine. And, and okay, we can hear you good as well. Morbius, um, you know, you are mostly like, you know, you were telling me last time that instead of like, you know, you, you have a more success um, in front of the object trying to move things um, rather than, or sorry, you have more success doing telekinesis from a distance rather than like you're doing it up close. Could you elaborate on that? Like, and like you know, well, why do you think that is and all that kind of stuff? I don't know. I think that it just comes down to like uh, trying to experiment with things that aren't going to affect the object by like, you know, body heat or anything like that. I'm trying to get as far away from it as I can uh, to isolate it. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you want to like personally prove to yourself, like, you know, 100% that you're doing it and stuff like that. That's why you prefer to. You telekinesis from a distance, yeah. pretty. Much. You guys want cheese on your burgers? Yeah, I don't mind. That, yeah, that <laughs> won't muster. That Later. that Later. sounds like that and yeah. that and it's harder. It's harder. And I think it's, it's it's a little harder to do it like hands free. Uh, from a from a distance, like for example, you you can move it. Uh, it's isolated, right? You have like a glass container over it, and you can yeah, move. Yeah. You know, you, using magnetism, right? But I think yeah. it's the same thing if you go from a distance and you get used to doing it, like mm -hmm. just like observing it, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird because when I do it, I kind of like look at myself as a third party. Like I don't look at myself. I look at there's me, the object, and then I try to see myself looking at myself and the object at the same time. So it's kind of a little different. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Nico? Like, you know... um you don't, you know, you, you do so many different things with telekinesis. It's one of many things you do. Do you have more success, like, you know, um, you know, trying to move an object like a side wheel right in front of you or like you know, from a distance? What, what, what is your take on that? Well, uh, what I do um, now, like, for example, here's a good example about your question. So last night when I was working with uh, decreasing the temperature of the thermometer, mm -hmm. at first I did um, head on by watching a GM Wolf's video. So I looked at the little ball in there. I put my attention there and 
different things, whatever works. For example, I did spherical wave type exercise where I'm um, I'm looking inside that ball like I am inside that ball, and I feel like I'm the thermometer, um, and I can feel the like I am a thermometer decreasing down, working something like that. And then another one I did was remembering um, by the science of the eye. So I went on the other side where you can see me and that the monitor's in front over here where I can't see it, but I can remember it dropping temperature as well. Same thing with kinesis. Sometimes I do, um, you know, everyone experiments, of course, but different ways every time. Um, and then calculating my vibration results. So see how the response is. Awesome. Experimenting. awesome. I, one more thing. I believe it works according to the person's imagination, whatever they're convinced to, whatever they reprogram the subconscious mind for the activation. Nice, nice. Okay, okay. Chris, do you have any success or have you played around with like, you know, putting them like, you know, you, you all often levitate that, that paper and stuff like that, which is super dope. I can't do that. But have you ever thought about putting that in like a glass container or like a plastic container and see if you can, you can still do that? Oh, yeah. I do. I try with myself all the time, and you know, I've had videos of that go back, you know, four or five years. You know, nice. it's just um, I haven't really shared that much. I mean, obviously, um, I've just recently started sharing because um, my master told me it was okay and to not be so selfish. So I probably will with time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope, um, Nico. So, yeah. you know, you, you all know Chris does a phenomenal electrokinesis. Like, it's it's unbelievable phenomenal. that he can do it live. Maybe we get to see mm -hmm. him do it tonight again. But, um, Nico, do you have any, like, uh, um, experience with electrokinesis at all? Yeah, I have a, a video out on my YouTube. Um, oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with some electrokinesis, I do have some experience with it. So, uh, I guess um, your question would be, what is... Um, my performance towards it. Hmm. Yes. Oh. Oh. You, okay. Good. Good. I've never seen. I. I. I don't. I thought I've seen most of your videos, but maybe I missed <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, one thing I forgot about something. One thing, Nico and Chris has in common. Um, you guys have both uh went to uh Ebola Ministries. Um, uh. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Set seminar, if you will. Um, right. you know, um, and you guys both play with aerokinesis and stuff like that. Um, what, when, when was it again, uh, Chris, that you visited Mr. Grubb? 2015. Oh, that long ago. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, what, was, a long what, was ago. What, what was your experience, Nico, to, or your, your seminar visit to 2019? Uh, 2019 or 2020? I think it's 2019, yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. And and obviously Nico does a lot of aerokinesis and stuff like that. We haven't seen a whole lot of um, uh, uh, aerokinesis from Chris. Um, Chris, do you play with like you know pinwheels and stuff like that? Constantly, man. That's like how I started out. Um, and it's like one of my favorite elements to play with is going outside. I mean, I'm constantly doing it. I have to like bring attention to my myself when i'm in public because i'm like i find myself playing with the trees and you know moving the wind and i'm like okay i need to maybe not do this and like yeah <laughs> yeah 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 no, norman can you can you talk can you hear us uh-oh having issues <laughs> okay <laughs> that sucks <laughs> yeah yeah it's all good, you know. But at least he's. <laughs> at least we can you hear me now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, we, uh, we can hear you now. Nor, nor, nor on, I'm oh, sorry, man. My mic's gonna keep shutting off again and shit. But you know. Oh, it's all, it's, it's all good, brother. Norman, do you do you do aerokinesis at all? We we see you obviously do telekinesis videos every day. Do you do aerokinesis at all? Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I honestly, when I go outside, it's like super powered, like super charged, and I just don't, I don't, I don't fuck with it because I know, like, like last time I did it outside, I summoned a meteor. <laughs> so, like, I don't, oh, uh, I literally don't do it outside. 
Yeah, yeah. Right, um, right, right. I don't know. Not only yeah, that, I, honestly, like a lot of the, a lot of the stuff like outside, like it can be faked too. You know what I mean? So, I just, yeah. I just, you know, rather do it. Uh, you know, like sealed, for instance. You know, there's no messing around. You know, like or, you know, like when I'm doing a 15 minute video or whatever, like I was doing today. You know. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's you, you can't fake that shit. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Like outside, you know, like I get it. It's the wind, you know, but. Yeah. Right, right. So, so you're trying to, Nico, I, I, and I want to ask Nico and Chris uh, something regards to your aerokinesis. So, um, you know, recently I interviewed Antonio Telekineswood. I was at, I asked him the same thing. He basically told me, that you know um or no i rather i i asked him like so if you can get to a very high level with telekinesis like say you get to the point where you can you know move the pinwheel not the sidewalk but the pinwheel that you put you know play with aerokinesis and stuff like that. say if you can get to the point where you can do that inside indoors do you think if you get to the point where you can you know just mess with that indoors and you take that outside do you think like at that point of development of your energy do you think you can pretty much summon like you know like a hurricane and stuff like that at will do you think that's possible nico and chris is, know, is my question is my question making sense i think you're asking uh pretty much if you're doing aerokinesis inside your sand and then you train what, what, on it what, what I'm asking is you're more powerful. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. What what I'm what I'm asking is, basically, if your TK is super on point, super powerful, do you think if you take take your skill outside, um, like say if you got get to the point where you can move the pinwheel, move? I to this day I don't know anybody that can move a pinwheel indoors, but if you get to that point of development and you go outside and you play with aerokinesis, do you think at that point, because, you know, it, it requires a lot of wind to move the pinwheel. I mean, you, you know from experience, right, Nico? What, 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 what is your take on that? A uh, great one, yes, definitely. One of my uh, favorite books I like is called, um, it's like Mystics and Miracles, and it's with these saints, and it shows them, this guy named, it's about what you're saying, uh, Saint Vincent Farrow, after he raised like 40 dead people from the graveyard. And they're living them on the people. There were some people jumping out of burning building, and he uh, suspends them in midair and uh, levitates them all the way down. And another one with St. Patrick, he snaps his finger in a desert and it turns automatically into a snow village, a snow place. But yes, anything is possible. But I know what you're asking about the exercise for the curriculum and the training to evolve and gain better access, right? If it's convinced in the mind, if there's a goal like that and that's what you believe in the mind, 100% it will happen. It must. Nice, nice, nice. Very cool. I agree. Thank you for that. Thank you for that demo, Chris. Um, let, let's ask Morbius a question real quick. Morbius, um, you don't have a whole lot of experience. In fact, in fact, at all with like you know playing like with energy outside with the wind, with the clouds and stuff like that. Am I correct? Yeah, I don't do anything outside. I try to isolate it as much as I can. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah. I certainly feel the same way for the most part as well i mean it's it is fun to play with like the, the elements but i do like that. but but i do believe that like whatever you practice inside that's isolated if you get a large enough effect absolutely outdoor you must have a larger effect because uh, wind has mass right and if you can manipulate yeah. the mass of the wind obviously with because all telekinesis is telekinesis it doesn't matter what you call it it's all the same thing Right, you know, right, right, certainly. We're moving definitely. aerokinesis, electrokinesis, whatever. It's all kinesis. It's all with your mind, right? So mm -hmm. uh, if you you have good results indoors, especially with a pinwheel, I mean, I don't see why you want to have a bigger result outside. It's just, it's just what I think. Is that, is one right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right, good point. Good point. Um, Morbius, you are a firm believer in meditating to cultivate energy in order to you know influence an object and stuff like that um you put a large emphasis on on meditation am i, am I correct on that yes because just because uh you know when we sleep we're replacing energy right like 
you know, throughout the day we're moving around and everything. I think your mind's the same way. Like pretty much we're just recharging our mind, not really our battery, not really our, uh, our body. We're recharging the battery. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you're doing a lot of meditation, especially if you're staying conscious, uh, during your meditation, because obviously that's hard to do when you're meditating for long periods of time is to stay alert and not to think about anything. Uh, so yeah, I think of it's kind of like charging your phone, like charging your body, same way. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Certainly. Um, yeah. Morbius, you're obviously work out a lot. You're very fit. Nico, you're very fit. Um, you know, Chris is trying to run a marathon, working towards running a marathon and stuff like that. What do you all think? Like, do you think you know being in you know good physical condition affects your energy level? Well, let's start with Chris. What What do you think about that? Um, I, I think that it gives your energy a better environment to exist in. Uh, I, I think that um, when you're more physically fit, you're able to handle more energy inside of your body at once. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just my opinion. I mean, because there's, um, there's guys out there that are not in great shape that can move, you know, objects too so it, it's it's kind of just like all preference i do know that after meditating you do get a desire to make your body more fit so it's almost like it's kind of telling you what you need to do to enhance its um uh, its existence in you right what what is your take on uh fitness nico you're obviously you know you're a martial artist just like myself and uh morbius um you know um, um, you know, I, I think you're a huge advocate of working out and stuff like that, too, right? Right. Uh, well, balance, of course, for the mind, um, body and soul or spirit, right? The balance, of course, could be important, but at the same time, it wouldn't matter when it comes to brainwave states or tapping into gamma, theta, alpha. The different brainwave states could have a huge effect, uh, you know, according to how the person's personal energy or the environment field or the collective, how much of the influencer they are, you know? Interesting. What 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 is your take on uh, working out and like in order to increase your uh, energy, Morbius? I think that it works because uh, like everything's ran from your mind, right? It's just the limitations of your body. So I think mentally it makes you more disciplined, um, and it gives you obviously more energy if you uh, maintain your body. It's you know it's going to be giving output. Because everything's, right. everything's mental before it's physical, right? So if you have a, I think if you have a weak output uh, for your limitations on your body, your mind will be the same way because it's all in your mind anyways, if that makes sense. Right, right. Certainly, yeah. certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, I asked Morbius and Chris this question when I interviewed you gentlemen last time, and you guys are huge advocates of like semen retention as well. Um, I think I asked Norman. Norman said it doesn't really matter. I, 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 when I interview you, Nico, I don't remember if I asked you anything in regards to semen retention in order to, you know, re to, to maintain your energy, if you will, not let it out. Um, wh what is your take on semen retention, um, no fap and stuff like that in order to maintain your energy, Nico? I believe there are great elementary teachings uh, for the basics um, because I'm at the point of understanding where literally everything is possible you can snap your finger and refill your semen you know like you seen snap mm -hmm. your fingers you get brand new teeth money in your bank account manifest of anything so same thing with the human body and um semen as well but it's a great elementary and basic uh principle for uh beginners starting out understanding that are not operating at certain levels yet interesting okay yeah okay. yeah, so, yeah so, uh, who, so who's talking right now oh i was gonna say something i was gonna say that uh I mean, you really don't know until you try it, right? If it's a struggle for you to do it, you could probably do it because it means that it's a discipline issue, right? So <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna push you to another level. Like, I mean, I feel great when I do it. I mean, I do feel different. I feel physically stronger, if that makes sense. I guess That's they call awesome. it testy because it's testosterone. It's generated, you know, but uh, physically, yeah, sometimes I go eight months, nine months. And I do meditation and I feel great. But I think if you do it too long, yeah, it's probably not too healthy for you. Uh, if you already have the, if you could control your animalistic instincts, like your, your, your basically built in nature versus your conscious, 
mm-hmm. you know, what you know you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. Obviously, if you're just spilling it on the floor, I mean, it's a waste anyways, right? <laughs> it's a, yeah. it's a life. It's it, it, that, that generates yeah. life. Like that makes life. Like literally, if you put it in salt water, like some shit will grow from it. Like with a, yeah. a fetus of an egg or something like that. There's been experiments with it. Like a backyard alchemist that do it in your attic and stuff like that. I don't know if you've seen the the egg and the semen uh, in the salt water. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that thing, it's a, a living creature. Like mm-hmm. men generate like <laughs> serious life force. Like I'm, it's serious. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great wisdom. Thank you for that, Morbius. So since. All four phenoms are on one call. Well, it looks like we just lost Norman, but once again, but um, I want to ask you three gentlemen, obviously there's new telekinetics emerging all the time in Facebook groups asking like, hey, how do I do TK and stuff like that? Let's start with Chris. Chris, what would be an advice you would give to a complete newbie on when, if they want to start on this telekinesis journey? What, what would be your advice? Um. <clears throat> I think that if you're in it just for um, selfish purposes, you know, um, like you watch Star Wars and you want to be like Emperor Palpatine, you know, that's your whole goal. Uh, There's nothing wrong with that, but it will change once you start doing this stuff. Um, I I think um, a lot of people will give up so shortly after they start because they don't feel anything happening internally. So during meditation, I didn't feel anything for a year and a half. I'm like, how disappointing. <laughs> but I still made sure to do it because um, I knew just through Steve, him telling me just to put in the effort that something was going to happen. And one day I just knew that I can move things or you know, shut out lights. It just comes to you. It's like a living spirit that enters you yeah yeah awesome what about you morbius obviously when in our group telekinetic minds you know and occasionally we get these comments and stuff like that if you go to other groups there's comments all the time hey how do you do telekinesis what will be your advice to a newbie morbius i would say just get a side wheel and fall in a deep trance and focus on one point and see what the effects are and then once you get the feeling of what the effects are, just keep practicing until you can spin it and it falls off if you're just starting. Right, right. I mean, I like right when you said trance. I'm recent, that's what I'm starting to realize. Like, it's all about just getting into a trance. Like, the whole goal of even meditating yeah. is to get into a trance and stuff like that. Um, Nico, um, what what would be your advice? Um, you know, I've, you know, obviously there's a lot of people, you know, you, you hold classes and stuff like that as well. I'm sure you get similar questions all the time. What would be your advice to someone who is embarking on this journey who wants to learn how to do TK? Definitely. Um, well, if they're obviously embarking on the journey of TK, their mind's already open to a lot of things. So we want to have to mention um, for the reason of why to them. So they're already there most of the time, <laughs> sometimes not. But the basic chi ball with the hands. Uh, I like to do is sensitivity training. That's one of my favorites with people. See how um, sensitive they can be. Um, I like everyone else's answers as well. You know, falling in a deep trance. But uh, yeah, sensitivity training, uh, feeling the the energy with chi balls and just playing around. Um, but do it as a lifestyle throughout the day, like like uh, everyone's doing here. They're training while they're on the interview, they're being hungry, consistently. Yeah, so, like, yeah. Keep watching, keep watching well, videos. Right. So the when you look at guys like Norman, it's like that's all he does, like all day, mm. every day. All he does is TK. No wonder he gets so good. You know? Exactly right. <laughs> yeah. What what is, what is your take on you know doing too much and draining yourself? Like, do you have any experience with that at all? I, I'm. Morbius has similar experience with that. I know because I you know we talked about this so many times. Unfortunately, Norman, we lost him, but Norman doesn't seem to get drained so much, no matter how much he practices and stuff like that. What is your take on doing too much energy work that it drains you? Like, Do you have similar experiences with that, Nico? Um, no, I don't. I'm actually just like Norm as well with that one as well, uh, with everything that I do, because let's say when I'm doing healing, I'm going to get it back to TK as well. 
um, I feel a lot of people's reactions and their vibrations um, get me right back up again. Um, and my, I feel like my life force never drained. I'm always happy and excited and full of energy all the time. But, but I think it's because of my perception of life and the way that I view things and um, non, non-judgment most of the time, um, oneness, going into blasphemy to get the full revelation, hanging out in the darkness to embrace embrace it with light, you know, um, embracing the polarity. But to make it in simple terms, I think uh, people get drained with TK because they're looking for results instead of operating from results. Mm, okay, okay, okay. Interesting. Okay. What 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 is your take on um, you know doing too much energy and like you end up draining yourself? Like, do you have experiences like that, uh, Chris? Because I, I I feel like I have that trouble um, all the time. I used to in the early stages of this. Yeah, you would get drained after doing it for too long. It's like you start getting a headache. Yeah, yeah headache. Like, awesome. Feel like you get a heart attack. Like, like you, didn't, you, didn't you didn't you go to the hospital once, Morbius, for this? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You get burned out. Yeah. You can drain yourself. I mean, I, it depends on how. It's like reading a book, right? Like, you could be a great reader, but if you're using parts of your brain, uh, you know, obviously your brain's a muscle. So I think that anything you focus on for long periods of time, if that's all you're doing, it's going to drain you just it's because, you know, where your attention goes, is this where it goes? Yeah. But uh, oh, obviously, if you like, Ledbetter. happy birthday, yeah. bro. Happy but birthday, that's just from my, that, that's, that, that's, uh, it's either that or you get over energized. I noticed that a few times, like, my hands will start to, I don't know, they feel like they're vibrating, like really, really high. Like when I'm practicing sometimes and like my whole body will start to get like hot. So I don't know, man. Like if I do it too much, I either have the tired effect or I have the overcharged effect and I can't sleep. I can, I can uh, actually uh, help you with that if you have an issue still. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Is there okay. any advice to counter this if you will, yeah. if you will um, Nico, go ahead. So when, um. Whenever there's an overcharge, like on the hands, that means that um, you're interacting. Of course, it's overbalanced or it's too much. And this is the same thing with healing, that if your hand, if if you're going to use the hand, it starts to feel that I can feel it now just by talking about it, like too much pressure or tingles or too much static here. That means if you back up more and relax the tension in the body and uh, kind of give it space, you're still connected. If you can still feel it, you're still connected Mm -hmm. and you actually have better results. Um, same with the healing. If I'm too close and, and I can feel a lot of power and energy, it's actually uh, it, the tension can hurt them more. Or uh, you can still, you're still like in this fractal of the person's emotions, thoughts, and layers, whatever it is. But if you actually back it up, it's like oxymoron. It sounds polarity. It sounds really opposite. So mm-hmm. you're pretty much kind of relax and kind of get space, space work in that space and be more aware of the body and it'll kind of transmute and recharge you fast. Yeah, maybe that's why I like doing. Maybe that's why I like doing things from a distance because I, I had results with the uh, that once I backed up. Uh, so I was, just, yeah, that's a good that's good advice right there. But like I said, sometimes I won't be able to sleep. Like I'll be, I'll be up, man. I'll be that focus. <laughs> that focus, yeah, man. That was keep me up. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Well, those are some great uh, tips and advice. Norman, can you talk right now? Or is he still, he's still frozen? <laughs> that and, you know, re- recording recording your meditations, I've noticed that, like, when I record it, some of them, like, there's some very weird, strange results, like, just what, with my what camera. Do mean, what do you mean by recording a meditation? What do you mean by that? Like, when you meditate, record yourself. Because sometimes there's like abnormal events that go on around you you're not even aware of. Yeah. And like Can you, you may... elaborate on that? Like what, what type uh, of paranormal? stuff moving around? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like glitches that. That are uh, not glitches, <laughs> but real glitches <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Caught on yeah. Tape. Yeah. Or that or like, you know, at first I thought, oh, okay, maybe there's yeah. dust flying around the room. And I, I got all pictured with all these like orbs, like. Oh shit! It's a lot of them. Okay. Those wow. are um, spiritual. Can you guys hear me? It's all subconscious. It's all subconscious, man. Like honestly, it's we, just we practice. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, just yeah, practice, yeah. honestly. Like the less you try, the more results, man. Like honestly, you just walk yeah. into a room and it affects it. You know what I mean? Right, like right. Like so. Like on it. 
like I understand, like you know how masters and gurus, like like I've never had a master or a guru. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so I don't know. Like I'm self-taught. Like I, like Chris knows, Ken knows. You know, like I'm, I don't know. Like I've never, you know, like I meditated for a couple hours a day for a little over a decade. You know, uh, I used to be fit. I used to work in the bush. I used to, you know, my whole life I worked on a farm. Fuck, I grew weed when I was 15, man. Trust me, I'm active, you know, like, but I, <laughs> you know, like, uh, I, I don't know. And honestly, my, like, since I died, honestly, I got sick, you know, and I could barely breathe and breathing is a big part of it. You have to be able, it's, it's life. That's what, you know, uh, but I could still do it just as strong as I could before. You know what I mean? Like, ask Chris, I've been doing it for not even two months. And in two months, he's him himself he's like amazed you know what i mean like he's anyways yeah yeah i'm very interested in i'm very interested in what nico said about spherical waves what do you mean by that because when i do recording sometimes i see like waves of light moving across my phone like this yeah yeah like it's yeah, subconscious man great, so, so, sorry, sorry nico um that 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 it's so funny you're asked that to nico uh morbius um that was gonna ironically be my second question um um, yeah, so so Nico, uh, to, to you know, uh, you, you gentlemen don't know Nico very well, but Nico is actually, you know, very very. Um, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, but he's familiar with these it's, like orb type beings. Yeah, yeah, like I understand he's, what you mean. Yeah, 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 certainly. So, um, Nico, uh, could you answer Morbius's question, and also, um, could you explain what these orbs are and stuff like that? Definitely. Um, and, and truthfully, coming from the heart, I haven't found anybody else who's um, uh, or being at my level. <laughs> if that's the word for it. I don't know the words either. But yeah, with the spiritual waves at the level that I've that I've been at, um, uh, it looks fake, <laughs> but it's completely real. And he even show people through Zoom in their own homes through their own eyes. But yes, it's pretty much the pineal gland system. When it transfers a linear wave, a linear wave is pretty much a logical thought, a carnal thought, a, a something that is... Um, uh, that has also doubt in it so whenever you're working with your intuition a lot and your instincts and your intention and you're coming full from the heart you're able to develop the orbs which gets externalized um from within externalized you get the goosebumps maybe the chills sometimes and the electrons will speed up and it will produce the spherical waves entering into manifestation and that works through the system of the pineal gland it's uh very very cool now when you can't sleep at night if you relax your jaw or your face, then your body would get to relax. Your face has to relax first before the body does, and then you'll be able to go to sleep. A lot of times we're carrying detention in the jaw a lot or even thinking a lot about the telekinesis. But, but of course, simple nostril breathing, whatever it is to get you to meditation or sleep or something. Just uh, relax the face and um, and don't change nothing else after that. And just be aware of what's going on and you'll fall asleep. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Chris, you... Chris, do you have any experiences with like, you know, encountering orbs or capturing capturing orbs on video and stuff like that? Well, it, it's kind of funny. I was um, gonna say this one recent uh, story that happened with me. So, this is my home office. I do I work here like eleven hours a day sometimes. And um, one day, I decided to get into a really deep meditation. A few months ago and um i have video cameras set up all around here and security systems because of what i do um and the day after i did that meditation i got a notification on my phone that there was movement and so i was watching the video and this chair teleports like the video feed did not cut it teleported mm -hmm. positions and you could see over time like up, it fast forwards and condenses the day to play it back for you. But there was like um, a mass gathering over in the corner of my office of light. Mm -hmm. And just in an instant, this chair went from here to the opposite side of the office. And I was like, I tried to call the electric electrical company to see if there was an outage at this time. Like I Wow. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. No windows set off, nothing. Nothing was broken into. Like, I'm still, like, 
amazed at, at that because I have that video too that I can share with you guys. But dude, was, share uh, share that with me, please. That right. that's I want to. I've never seen a tele. I mean, yeah, I've never seen a teleportation video that I'm convinced is real. You know, so. <laughs> me, yeah, me and my girlfriend, one. me and my girlfriend, we seen an orb. Uh, we were both just okay. sitting on the couch. And uh, you know how you see them like uh, in when you're recording, you know what I mean? Like a normal little orb that flies by, you know what I mean? It wasn't like that. I'm talking like a, a lightning ball. Like yeah. it was, it was, I don't know how to describe it, but it was pure energy. It was blue. It was, uh, it was floating maybe four or five feet above the air. And it was going like through the halls in my house and yeah. basically stopped it stopped maybe i don't know like four or five feet away from me and my girlfriend and i'm like nudging her, my ex at the time and i'm like you see that she's like yeah i'm like oh what the fuck you know like but yeah it was um uh like me personally i've been around a lot of death like i've known a lot of people like i'm i'm up to like in the 20s 30s people that died you know uh at the time uh, one of our neighbors she was pregnant and she died and the boyfriend, when he came home from work, he found the body and uh, basically he asked for a phone to be able to call 911. And uh, yeah, yeah, super at the same apartment. Uh, uh, he died from cancer and him too. He, he was, you know, uh, always slamming doors and you could hear the door slam after he was dead. Uh, when I grew up, it was the same thing, you know, like... Uh, uh, we'd be sitting there, everybody's at the coffee table, and you'd put your can of Coke on the table, and it'd be on top of the fridge, you know? Like, uh, I don't know, st st mm -hmm. stupid shit, but so, uh, real hauntings, you know? Yeah. Do you, let's start with Morbius. Do you have any crazy stories like teleportation or, like, something insane like that? Like, what, what is the craziest paranormal thing you've ever experienced on Morbius? I don't know if it's really paranormal, if it was just like subconscious, like what he was saying. But uh, I mean, I've been around like fireplaces and all of a sudden they'll blaze up. They'll blaze up real high or I'll be around in the house and a picture frame will fall off the wall. Oh, okay. you know, if I was looking at it at the time, I wasn't really thinking about it because, you know, I was young. I wasn't really thinking about it, but that's probably the only things that I've seen. I've never really experienced anything per se. Uh, Except for hearing hearing maybe my name called, and there's nobody around. It's happened. Oh, it happens all the time. Like I'll hear my name and I'll look and there'll be nobody there. So I don't know what that's about, but yeah, uh, I haven't like seen anything per se super paranormal or anything like that. So I don't know what that is. Can I ask Nico a question? Oh, oh absolutely. Uh, but actually, are you actually? Uh, hang, okay. hang on, hang on, uh, Chris. Um. That, that's what I was actually planning on doing in the end is like to have you guys ask each other questions if you guys have questions. Um, but, but before we do, uh, I want to ask Nico. Obviously, Nico, you um, are, you know, Mr. Paranormal. You have tons of paranormal mm -hmm. stories to share. I mean, there's hundreds of stories you've already shared. What are yeah. some of the most recent ones that you can share? Is there anything that, that happened to you recently, Nico, that kind of stood out like that was paranormal? Um. This one's uh, I had a lot more recent recent than this one, but this one's my favorite one. Hey, Serenity, Serenity. I don't know if she can hear me or if she's coming. She's in the kitchen here, but she was with me when um, we. She said there's, there's someone um, like spying on her or whatever, and I said there is, and she's like, huh? And I said, let me show you. So I went outside and I said, uh, and from there's gonna be a shooting star coming, and I've done this a lot, um, so it's normal here. A shooting star is going to come from the right to the left in three, two, one. Here's Serenity here. And then the shooting star comes by. And then there's a big old window that opens up in a celestial. And I said, put your equal proportion of your awareness on the earth plane now. So we see all these shadow phantoms walking around, shadow creatures or whatever. And she's like, did you see that one? Say, hey, Serenity. Hi, guys. Yes, in your camera. <laughs> Hi, Serenity. Oh. Nice to meet you. I mean, I, I don't know if you know this, Nico, or not, but a Serenity, Serenity actually invited me to come to your birthday party. Um, but oh, obviously, okay. I couldn't go and stuff. I, I don't know if you were. If you, if you were she, 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 and, uh, she informed me after, and I said, uh, no big deal. Uh, Ken won the lotto. He's stuck up now. I knew he wasn't coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but, but go, go ahead. Yeah. Finish your story, Nico. So uh, Serenity's like, did you see that shadow creature that went that uh, over there? I'm like, you talk about the one that went behind me to the left, but et cetera. We started walking down towards the driveway. We're in a suburb in a city here. It was an empty lot with some trees in front of us. And uh, we get pushed back 
right? Mm -hmm. We get pushed back, both of us like this, up okay. some. It's like a magnetic force or something, like a, like a weight being pushed against our chest. Scary. Then, uh, <laughs> then uh, uh, I told her it's uh, it's in the woods. And before when I pulled up, I seen a black obelisk craft above the house. And I was on the phone with my friend, told him I'll call him back. And you're already freaking out when I go in the house. It's at oh, 10 o'clock yeah. at night. We haven't seen each other in like 12 hours. So, so anyway, uh, we're walking, we're walking there and um, we see these, uh, this invisible silhouette, but there's like these red little ambient energy star, a blue one, a green one, a purple one. We're all pointing out the same stuff we're seeing. So then I started doing interspecies communication, pretty much animal stuff, stuff that I learned, telepathy and different things. And I started communicating. Then I told her verbally with my mouth what I've um, done energetically. And I said, I told her to walk forward. And then you heard this marching through the trees coming um, towards us and you're thinking it's like a guy with a knife or something <laughs> probably in your mind so uh then i um it's you can start to see the silhouette more coming out and then i told her that to manifest itself and then it uh it does it comes from the front of the trees and you see this little uh gray with a big old head and little bitty eyes and mm -hmm. and, and, and but uh, I prayed prior that let's not have a subtle encounter let's have a long lasting encounter so we wouldn't doubt it and prayed for it so it was about 30 seconds maybe and um you're like screaming ah, and i'm hanging on to her and i'm like oh. and i'm so great yeah face to face about 10 months ago that that's, is that's that is a wild story yeah um, and, we, so, so, and my family um, we had a lot of ufos and my mom has like interdimensional beings and aliens come and broke this you know dream state and all that but but physically during conscious awake it was uh out of this world crazy <laughs> amazing yeah, yeah. And that's all aw that's awesome i'm um, so um i want to give you all oh, yeah. an opportunity yeah, to ask it's... each other questions i mean you know i'm sure you know um you know this is a great opportunity uh if, if nico obviously you know chris is a phenomenal telekinetic and um morbius is a very you know, wise person as well and you know, obviously nico has many paranormal experiences and all sorts of healing stories and stuff like that do you guys want to ask each other questions right now yeah, yeah. this opportunity can I, yeah. can I, Nico, can I ask, um, do you speak to the dead? Uh, if, uh, if we'll use the terminology for the sake of everybody, yeah, we'll use that term. Yes. I know exactly what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I know you, I know you do. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, how, like, what is your lineage? What is your practice? On doing it. So, uh, let's see, I wonder what first started that. So I have a, a few guys that I watch on YouTube where uh, they, uh, they're, they're mediums and they're really good and you probably know some, right? So I watch their videos and I get impartation by identifying as them. And then I start going out and trying to get by faith with strangers in the streets. And then I started growing in it. So I started buying books on how to speak to the dead. I started taking notes and I started putting it on my walls, to all the mechanics and the charts and how to do it. Then I uh, call some of my family members up. And then I got to the point where people that I know that passed away, I started making a chart, like a cloud of witness chart, or all the people that passed, family members and friends, and I put them all up in my rooms, and, mm -hmm. and I'll speak to them and, and communicate, and I'll have some of their artifacts and some of their stuff. So um, I think I have one of the charts over here somewhere. Um, I bring all the stuff with me. But that's one way, and then I would uh, pay attention to uh, signs. I'm not seeking them. They'll just appear, of course, and or the, or the predictions will come. But I can start off with like, hmm, do I want to see uh, the phantom, the ghost, whatever? Do I want to see it? And then I'll, and it was like a vision, not my imagination summoning it up. It's just there and I'm believing it. And then it starts to stay, stay more. And then I'm like, I'm audibly, I'm like, hmm, you know? And then it would start to pour through, spill it out my mouth. And same way as yours, probably, right? Um, uh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, go well, ahead. Marcus, do you have a question for somebody? Uh, no, because I'm going back to the, the first one. I, I take that back. There was one time when I was meditating and someone touched my shoulder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's like what this. I do. I actually say yeah. I do sometimes and I go, uh, so your brother passed away and his name and somebody name is your middle name, uh, Alicia. And they're like, Yeah. And uh and I go, he's gonna touch you the same spot he touched you today, the funeral. And then I'll see a flare or orb go by and I go, oh, and touch, and then um, or sometimes I'll see the silhouette or the ghost itself and different things depending if you want to put yourself in that mode just like i'm doing telekinesis i'm going to do healing right. and talk to the dead mm -hmm. hey, what is, um, do you mind if i ask about um religion 
Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Like I said, to ask if you have questions for Nico, Morbius, Norman, you know, feel free to. Morbius and and Nico, what is uh, your religious views? I don't have any, man. I don't. I'm not a real religious person. I'm more. I follow like more like Buddhist philosophies, though. Like I read Buddhist books and stuff like that, but I don't like chant and do all that things like that. So whatever I do, I think it's gonna come back to me. You know, I just I mind my actions. So That's karma, it. karma, yeah. Yeah, don't be a piece of crap, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. Just be a good person. I think that's the basis of all religion. So, <laughs> what, about you? what would be your answer, Nico, to Chris's? Yeah, uh, living by the golden rule, do unto others or wish unto others as you would like done unto yourself. And uh, I use the Quran, Yoga Sutra, exactly. the Bible, uh, just to meet people at their faith levels. And um, and all of us understand now for where we're at in life. I believe everything's everybody else's imagination. Imagination is real. People do have these encounters and these experiences. And, uh, you know, and we can do it with the science thing. 99.9% .9 empty matter. <laughs> so right. I honor people's imagination, even if they're debating me. And uh, it doesn't matter. I, I, I keep the peace. Awesome, awesome. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, Chris is a phenom. I mean, you know, super talented, arguably one of the best telekinetics in the community. Um, the Morbius or Nico, do you have any questions for uh, Chris? Yeah, I was going to ask because, yeah, Chris and, Nico, Chris and Nico, you guys do meditation, right? Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. Like when you're getting, uh, what's the spinning in the body? Because when you're meditating a long time, you get like a little spin. It, it wants to do this, mm -hmm. move in a circle. What is that? You want to take this? Sure. Huh? Yeah, yeah, well, I'll take it. So, uh, so what happens is when you go meditation, your different things in your body will happen for different reasons, of course. And not to get off subject, this is co uh, totally related to this here. So the feet is the foundation of your thought life. Your, your hand is how you handle things. Your fingers is the details. You carry burdens on your shoulders, and your heart is love. And your kidneys can store fear, and you know, liver can store uh, anger. Different things. Now there's uh, the different movements are going on in the body. It's like taking you in an energetic journey before it gets manifested externally. This stuff, you've always been spinning, but when you sit down in meditation, you've been carrying it with you the whole entire time. So that can relate to um, many different things. Some people are related to uh, maybe a uh, vertical chakra, either the, the root or the crown, um, different types of spinning, but different body positions and meditations. Like when people do a... Uh, empty force training or they get into the gigong pose or embracing the tree it's almost like the praise and worship for the christians and you see a pastor doing empty force and then they'll call it a, a deliverance or something or healing and then you see a, a non-verbal uh hypnotist do empty force or he'll call it a, you know hypnosis or the empty force guy will call it, you know what i'm saying right yeah so there's different poses for different things like um some people like bow down like this or even um buddhist or even indians and they'll make the serotonin the dmt the dopamine and different fluids move around but they're getting led through either religious texts or as we do it ourselves naturally in that state it's just like stirring up the body something stirring up many words grammatical terms but it's your experience it's you feeling what you're feeling experiencing what you're experiencing without trying to change it you're living and flowing okay so then my 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 question my other question is for chris when you're meditating a long time and you feel like your whole body's spinning in a circle like it's rotating like physically rotating your entire body just not yeah. inside and you rock back and forth like this right. like left to right as you spin i was just wondering what's the take on that that's um that's one of the meridian paths in the body. There's um, two main things that go up the spine and down in um, in your lower portion of your body. So upper goes counterclockwise, lower goes clockwise. When you get that spinning mm -hmm. sensation, you're actually tapping into your primary channel. So you'll feel like your entire body is it's like trying to spin this way or this way, depending on whether you're focusing on the top or bottom channel and you can actually think of both and it will actually feel like your body is trying to rip itself apart in different directions um mm -hmm. it's, it's trippy man i mean the energy in your body moves in the way that it wants to move regardless of what you're trying to so yeah 
because when I was doing it, right, like back when I had like really big results, like when I was meditating a long time, at first it was like you said, nothing happened, but just nothing happened. Just keep doing it. And the more I kept doing it, the more I started getting, I don't know if they were actual physical effects because I wasn't recording it at the time. But uh, as far as this, the, like a spiral in the body, yeah, I could feel it. It wants to move me in a circle. But I'm talking about physically feeling like your whole body is turning 360 degrees in a circle. Like the only time, I felt, like the only time spinning, I felt like the only time I ever felt like that was when I drank uh, something like 30 shots in 10 minutes. <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, yeah, no, this is insane. I've never had that oh, sensation. Cool. Idea. So, I, I don't know, maybe you're tapping into something I've never experienced before. Okay, I'm just it can make you nauseous. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't No, but playing with energy, yeah. like if you don't, if you don't know what you're doing, it can be dangerous, man. Like, you don't have to be an expert to know that, you know, like, uh, yes. you can literally get sick, man, you can kill yourself, uh. It could fuck up your life in a big way. Uh, and I'm not just talking TK. I got into it a few times before, but um, everything, man. Like, we, we act like it's, you know, a uh, piece of paper and this and that. Like, it's it's whole, it's whole life, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it I is mean, how I you treat I people, feel, you know? Yeah, I, did, I it, didn't feel it anything is, bad, but I just felt the rotations. I had heard different things, like it's a form of astral. Or something like that. I've heard people talk about it. Like uh, before, you you get astral astral rocks. You know, like when your body's doing this when you're sitting cross-legged. Right. But I just they never spoke about the spinning portion. Well, I've never experienced that. I mean, I've only asked twice. Yeah. Um, you know, it took me a long time, but I never got the spinning sensation. But that's really interesting, man. I mean. Yeah, in a way, everybody's different, but a lot of this stuff is the same. Um, so I don't know, man. Maybe you should write it next time and see where it takes you. Yeah, maybe you're getting out of a loop or a cycle. Yeah, maybe it's just interesting to me. Uh, Have you ever astral yeah. before? Uh, yeah, one time. Yeah, and one time happened? only though. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I could kind of say like you're moving through things, moving through objects, like uh, like either mountains and even the sky. I mean, you can move through everything, you know. You could just so move actually, through everything. It's you actually got to do travel when you did it. Yeah, I I've, think so. I've because done. that time that that time did it happen to me? Like I, it's kind of like there's a cord attached to you, right? Like from your right. Your stomach, your stomach, like where your belly button is, there's like a long cord, right? And then you just, you float off and then you, it's like kind of like you're flying, I guess. Like, you know, yeah, I, that's the only way I could describe it. I can, I can smell those cheeseburger, Morbius. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, oh, you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, do you want to see, oh, see some cords right ahead. now? Some what? Some Absolutely. Some show orbs. us. Show us. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sure. Why not? Show us. Okay. So, uh, if you get into a uh, alpha state, so take a couple of deep breaths, relax the tension in your body. Let's do it now, everybody together. Oh, oh, oh. what are we doing right now? Okay. Yeah, right now. So, in three, and you can open your eyes and see them. Sometimes you can see them with your eyes closed. You can open your eyes. So three. Two and just look in one spot. One. Now, everybody. Just keep looking straight. So. One more. Look. And just relax. Don't worry if you're not seeing it right now, because you will. So. so orbs manifest now, 100%. Here it goes. It's happening right now. Holy shit. And you can see some flares and everything shoot by. Holy shit. Seeing something new. Yeah. And uh, what about Morbius and Norm? Look at you guys. So one more time, just look in one spot. Don't look subconscious. You can if you want, but pick one thing. Are you talking about in the camera or outside? Uh, uh, just look uh, a few inches uh, from the camera, I guess, uh, but closer to you, not directly at it. Uh, like uh, six inches from your face. Ready? Three. Take a deep breath. Relax. Two. Here we go. Now. One. 
Oh, it's trippy. <laughs> Can you see them moving? They'll come by. I, I, I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. <laughs> That's fine. I'll be honest, I see that all the time. <laughs> yeah, you do one. That's crazy. I, I, <laughs> if you have your phone what, on what, or whatever, you can see I, it as well. What was your experience with that, Chris? Can you describe what happened to you what, or what you saw? Dude, I mean, just right in front of me, like literally <laughs> right in front of the computer screen, orb, 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 just zooming past me and around me. And I'm like, what the hell? That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's it's, interesting. Do, do you think Nico like people who aren't? I mean, obviously, you know, like you know, I, I think oh, out of you. out of. Thank you. Well, I mean, I mean, obviously, Chris is very, very in tune with the spirit realm and she energy and stuff like that. Do you think uh, us that aren't as developed perhaps ha has a hard time seeing things like that, or, or what do you think? Um, I don't think so because I had a lady who was 93 years old call me up and says, um, "I've never seen in a spirit a day in my life," is what she called it. So. Uh, I showed her the ambient energy outside first and where she could see the static and everything going on. Then I brought her inside, had her look at her aura on her hand and um, behind, you know, on the wall. And then um, as she was looking at the waves go by, like the double slit experiment. So I had her observing and uh, with no conditions. And then um, I was having the orbs come by and then she started to see other things move around um, throughout it. And she also had a sympathetic nervous system of hot and cold. She ended up getting healed just off of that. Um, because she opened her mind and got hypnotized uh, by a lot of my uh, videos and teachings in the past. So she submitted herself humbly and opened herself up. Awesome. That's that's really cool, man. Okay, okay. Hey, Chris. Oh, 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 oh go, go ahead, Norman. Oh, was Norman going to say something? No, oh, oh, I'm good. Okay, oh, okay, okay, Chris. I was going to say. Sorry, I thought it was Norman. Oh, okay. I have a question Chris. after somebody's done, okay. yeah. Okay. I'm honestly uh, usually a very quiet person, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, go, go ahead, Marius. So, Chris, did you, uh, did they say that you can talk about uh, like what they brought you on the Wind and Robbie show about, or do you have to be quiet about it? Um, uh, no, I don't have to be quiet about it. Um, you mean like the um, the proof is out there show that I went out? Yeah. Yeah, um, they just had me demonstrate, you know, live on camera with Rob at his house um, for the electrokinesis, and they, like, stripped me down and made sure I wasn't, like, connected to anything and had cameras everywhere. So I just lit a few bulbs before him, and it was um, it was cool. I got to electrocute the crap out of Rob, so that was fun. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Rob, Rob was cracking up laughing. <laughs> yeah, well, it... <laughs> We we all held hands like around the room and saw how far we could get it and um, so I think we got nine people zapped so it was kind of fun. That's awesome. <laughs> Are you uh, also working with uh, Mr. Denzibov? Who? Nikolai. Uh uh. Oh no yeah he's a, a cool guy. Uh, uh, we've been emailing for maybe two years or something but uh yeah I love to meet him. Uh, but besides yeah, that, I have yeah, a question as well. Um, I think that this uh, what we should start doing because uh, I do this with uh, the other religious groups and different things, and we start coming into oneness as we're bridging everybody in. And uh, we're on, like for example, it's really cool. Like when I work with the uh, Christians that are coming into oneness and they're mystical, they I see them tapping into other abilities. I don't see like another uh, section or another group or another types of uh, uh, sector or religions don't do. And then we bring them all together as like a giant body, you know. But what I wanted to say was um, we should also start having events because I also noticed uh, like with the telekinetic crew, we're very antisocial with the work that we do. But sometimes we get on Zooms or sessions or work on some trainings. But we need to come together as an event where we have some speakers, some yeah. demonstrators, some help, some hands-on protocols. Yeah. So everybody can come together as a team and a body where we can grow. Yeah. I we got to do this more person. often. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Chris and Chris and Amorbius were talking about meeting up earlier and stuff like that. I mean, you guys are, you know, pretty close. I mean, you, we got Utah, Vegas, and well, sorry, and I mean, Colorado. Nevada, you're Nevada, like Nevada. right next door too. Uh, Colorado. I mean, you guys are pretty close. Well, well uh, you know. th this is a, it here because I even shared this on my Facebook. What we do is we have uh, everybody. Like if people can't make it there and they don't have the money, what we do is we have people donate to get them the plane tickets. We have donates going in, and we're paying for everybody's stuff, their trips here, and all the rest. So it's not hard at all. 
if anybody had an issue of uh, pricing or money or where to stay, all that stuff's taken care of. Because we've been doing oh, no, man, I, I can't, I can't go to the, I can't go to the states. I have a criminal record. <laughs> 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 that's unfortunate i mean we I would, honor you well, i'm sure we can you know fly out to canada one of the hey man i'm being honest man <laughs> i believe you it's all good brother <laughs> it's all good all right so uh well we've been at it for over an hour now so i think we'll wrap this up um is there anything um else that you guys want to ask each other left i will say, I I say, I will say I will... just for yeah go ahead yeah, yeah, yeah. I was let's gonna have, say, yeah, let's uh, just have everybody say one one thing. Let, let's start with Morbius. I was gonna say, don't be careful who you let. Uh, you know, we were talking about religions earlier. I said, be careful who can suck your power from you because um, your belief is, you know, if it's not in yourself, you can't really believe in anything else. So, if you can't do small things like this, I mean, without uh, someone influencing you some type of way, I mean. If you really want to be connected to whatever the higher power is, just practice, you know, and be careful who you let in your circle because that could affect your output too. That's just my personal. Awesome. Um, Norman, do you have anything to say? Fuck yeah. I haven't said nothing the whole time. Uh, <laughs> it's an honor. It's, it's an honor to be here with everyone, honestly. Uh, if I could say one thing, that would be it. Okay. Thanks, okay. Man. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hopefully, hopefully we can uh, invest in the, you know, a better equipment. Honestly, man, I, I just, I, I hope that we like could, that. I, I hope we get to do this again. Honestly, we should, we should start like Definitely. making it a regular Definitely. thing. We would like to hear from you, but you have technical issues all the time. So <laughs> it's all good, brother. Um, Nico, is there any, any final thoughts that you have that you want to share? Oh, and, and, and Nico, um, I know that your uh, brother is going through a tough time as well. You can, you can go ahead and talk about that if you like, you know. Um, oh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're got, we got that rolling and I'm getting it taken care of. If you'd like, a lot of people watching this right now. So, oh, yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, my, my brother has a um, an illegal sentence. They gave him a, a legal life sentence. He's been in a uh, jail for nine years without even seeing a judge once. And then they uh, he, fi he finally seen a judge on December 20th. And then they uh, sentenced him for 30 years after they dropped the charges and then put it back on, laughed at court and said, so well, we can do that. And the whole thing's been a, a wild loss in the system thing. Um, it even went viral on TikTok and uh, a lot of people are you know, helping out and doing what they can. But um, been going on for, for quite a lot of years. But other than that, I've been sending him uh, the resources that we have and uh, to keep his mind right and, um, you know, that there. But justice is uh, being served and coming. So I believe in unconditional love and justice. And it's done through observation. So that's the action that you look back on. But anyway, um, yeah, it has been uh, an honor, Norm and Morbius. And um, super fast, Chris. <laughs> And Ken, everybody, always an honor, blessing to know you guys. And um, I would love to, I know uh, you're in Canada, um, but also having physical events while Norm can watch from Zoom. <laughs> we all meet, we're all meeting up. You see Norm on the big old TV when we go to the places. We can also do that too. Awesome. Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm, Chris, I'm always ready to meet. <laughs> I thought you were a vegan. How can you be ready to meet? <laughs> uh, to meet up. up. <laughs> um, I, I I just wanna um thank you guys. Like um, I've said before in um other interviews with Ken, this stuff can be very isolating because like who can you actually tell about this in like a day to day basis? And you know, I know that with my clients, I don't really share any of this stuff with you know, even my friends and family you know so meeting people like you that can help me grow and you know learn new skills new approaches new beliefs on how to do this stuff and what it actually is is uh i don't know i think we're tapping into the stuff of love here like this is what our existence is about and it's a shame that so few people are involved in it but it's wonderful to meet others that are just as involved so it's a pleasure meeting you guys. 
Awesome, awesome. Well, well, that was beautifully uh, said, Chris. Is, thank is you, everybody, for it? watching. Yeah. You know, I, I, Nico yeah, is yeah, uh, certainly Nico. I, 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 no, I was gonna that ask. Was so uh, awesome for Bruno, like, the multi people. <laughs> I, I've done this one before. It's just so cool that we got to do this again with like my favorite telekinetics and energy healer and stuff like that. So. Okay, what were we gonna say, Nico? I was gonna ask if. Um, okay, it looks like I'm a, anybody who needs any uh, okay. healing or anything, any problems or anything like that, uh, we can uh, work on it in two seconds or something. I'll definitely be reaching out to you, man. Perfect. <clears throat> Sounds great. Thanks, guys. All Thanks right. for hosting this, Ken. What about the hemorrhoid, Norm? You good? <laughs> 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 He's frozen in fear. <laughs> okay. Yeah, frozen in fear. All right, guys. Yeah. I think we're we'll actually no, man. I'm yeah, good. Thank you guys, and I'll, I'll link. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, <laughs> Ken's over there DJ. Yeah. <laughs> I think we'll wrap this up for now. Uh, thank you guys for joining. And I'll, I'll Nico, Nico, do you have a website? You know, you started a healing course thing. Do yeah. you have a website to that? So uh, yeah, it actually launches comments. tomorrow. It's called the school of mystics.com. Oh, launches tomorrow. Okay. That's right. Oh, I'm sorry. What is it? The school of mystics.com. School of mystics.com. Okay. So we'll, I'll put school of mystics. Comments. Yep. School of mystics.com. Check that out, guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. It was a tr truly an honor. Um, just what a beautiful moment we got to catch today with all these fine, uh, amazing practitioners. So, all right, guys. Uh, namaste. God bless you all. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right. See ya. See ya. Take care. Bye. -bye.